Today on the podcast, we're talking about Facebook ads and how they can help you grow your fan base, but when should you spend money on them and what should you promote online? We're talking about that today. We'll see you on the inside. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Songwriters Podcast. Thank you for swinging by. My name is Mike, creator of the Songwriters Planner. Really appreciate you guys swinging by this week. I try to do this every week and get these podcasts going. And so far, I've had a lot of luck. I've had a lot of downloads and a lot of people giving me feedback. So thank you, everybody, for doing that. Also, if you are new here and this is your first time hearing this podcast, I appreciate you finding me, whether you found me through the website or online or through social media, whatever it is, through my newsletter. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that I can cover at least some things of some topics of value for you as a musician and an artist. That is one of my passions, and I hope that is helpful for you as I share things that I've learned with you folks here on the podcast. Also, quick before we start, Today's episode, I just wanted to say that this podcast is available on iTunes and Spotify, so you can subscribe there if you, if you listen to those streaming services, or as well as obviously YouTube. I have a YouTube channel where all these podcasts are in video form. And last but not least, my Songwriters Planner website, www.songwritersplanner.com, where you can learn all about my planner and how it can help you as a musician be more creative, productive, and inspired. Yes. You can tell I've given that pitch uh, a couple times before (laughs) if you've been here before. But anyway, thank you guys for coming by. Um, Today's topic I really want to jump into. It is something I'm pretty passionate about, uh, and I've said this before, and I have touched on this topic before in a previous podcast. Um, If you go to my website and you search for podcasts and you look under social media or promotion, you'll find anything that I do under this category, and today's category is Facebook advertising. Yes! As musicians and artists, we must take off our creative hats sometimes and turn them to promotional hats, especially in today's market with we, we can do basically do all of our own advertising. We're responsible for that. So today's topic is Facebook advertising. Now, I've heard a lot of uh, call it strife and, and complaints and confusion from a lot of musicians who try to use Facebook advertising to promote their music. And it, I will say this now, that it is the one of the most powerful tools that we have available today for us artists. However, it can be easily misused or underused, and you can end up spending a lot of money on them with very little results. And, uh, and that alone can be frustrating because that can easily give you the impression, these ads don't work, I'm wasting my money. And in some cases, you might be if you're not running them correctly. Now, today what we're going to talk about is when should you use Facebook ads? What should you promote? What is it good for? What in the heck can you promote as an artist that is worthy of doing a Facebook advertisement? Now, basically the way Facebook advertise adver- ads work is you set up an ad campaign. You select your target. You want to target certain people. It can be broken down by uh, geographic location. It can, it can be broken down by demographics, um, it can be broken down by interests. I mean, the, the combinations are literally endless and it can be very overwhelming. But don't let that scare you because on the flip side, Facebook ads will get your music or whatever you decide to promote in front of a lot of people and you will get a sort of litmus test very quickly within a few days as to what you're promoting as to and and whether it's responding or resonating with the people that you are promoting it to you can get results very quickly and that's what makes facebook ads so great now obviously this is a funded platform you have to pay for these advertisements but surprisingly you don't have to pay a lot of money to get whatever it is you're promoting in front of a lot of people Um, previous podcasts, I talked about how much should you be paying for your ads and surprisingly, surprisingly, it's going to be a lot less than you think. So check that podcast out if you get a chance. Um, but what, what are you going to promote? What are you going to spend your hard earned money on to what is going to be worthy of you to run ads on Facebook? Because you don't want to promote everything. It's tempting to promote everything you do. $5 here, you know, 10 bucks here. $3 $3 here, look at my latest post online. It's tempting to promote everything, but you don't want to promote everything because you'll just be wasting your money if you do that. You want to have selected 
ad campaigns or selected content that you want to promote and you want to target that to the, the right people. And uh, that is what this is all about, is finding the right content that you want to promote, promoting it to the right people to hopefully get the best results, whether it be someone to follow your page, someone to go to your website and sign up for your newsletter, someone to go check out your Spotify channel, or eventually, which is the golden um, parachute of all, to make a purchase of either your music or your merchandise um, or a ticket uh, to get people to go to a show, okay? So what do you? what is it that you want to promote? What's worthy of your money on Facebook? Um, there's many things, many, many things that you want to promote, but there's only a few things that really make sense, that really only make sense for you to spend your money on. Because you could drop, you know, you could literally drop a hundred bucks on an ad. And if you're doing that, you want to make sure that what you're promoting is worth that money and is good, good content, and that you're targeting it to the right people. So let's talk about a few things that you should be promoting online as an artist on Facebook, okay? Um, you can be promoting your shows, okay? Locally, let's say you're playing around town locally and you've, you're building up a big show. You want as many people there as possible. So running an ad for a show that you have coming up is a perfect example of something that you want to spend money on, especially if you are going for a certain crowd turnout, a certain number, if you want to get as many people as possible. Now you want to promote to people who either follow you or people who don't even know who you are. And we'll talk about the difference between these audiences towards the end a little bit. But promoting a show is a good use of your money if you're trying to, quote unquote, blow this show up. And I know that that is one of the things that we as bands and artists love to do is to play big shows, especially if you can get as many people there as possible to come see you. So spending your money on an ad to do this is a good investment in, in a good investment for you, period. Now, I take, I take, take that with a, a grain of salt. It's a good investment if you're targeting the right people. Targeting the people who follow your page or targeting people who live in your area. Don't be targeting the people who live in a different country or state or even a different city who probably won't be at your show. Detailed targeting will get you better results if you do that. So, you know, what could you what could you use for promotion for a show? How about you shoot a quick video of yourself hyping up the show and saying, this is going to be great. Play some of your music. Um, video works best. So that would be a great use of your money to a Facebook ad promoting a show. Another thing would be um, if you are a touring musician and you're going on tour. Now this is a this is like promoting a show, but you're promoting many shows at once. Um, in that case, you might be running ads to the people who follow you, which is great. Or you might also be running ads to the cities that you are going to be arriving in. The cities that you're playing in, you might want to run those ads to those people as well. Now that obviously can is you're going to need a bigger budget for that because say you're going on tour for a week or two, you got 10 shows, um, that's 10 cities you're going to promote in. So that's money that you're going to be shelling out to get your ad in front of those people in those cities. However, it is a good investment because you're going to be playing in these towns and it may not be your hometown. You may have a crowd there. You may not. You don't know. But promoting yourself using Facebook ads if you're going on tour is a good investment of your money. Again, it takes a little bit of time to dial in the targeting of that, but overall you're going to get a good amount of eyes on your content, whether it be your video, whether it be your flyer, your tour flyer, uh, and your ad copy, the text that you have above. These are all things that are really good to have and good places to spend money. So live shows, touring, great places to spend your money for Facebook ads. Um, another thing, uh, you got a new music release coming out, you got a new album, you got a new, heck, it could just be a single. Uh, promote that. Spend your money on promoting your new music. Um, you know, it, it's tried and true. You can't go wrong with it. You're spending your money on something that you're basically all about is your music. Um, and again, dialing in that targeting. Who are you targeting it to? Do you target it to the people who already know who you are or the people who don't know who you are? Um, but overall in all, when it's all said and done, anything, any funds that you can come up with to promote your music and um, whether it is a flyer saying my new EP album single is out in a link with a link to go get it, a link to go listen to it, always provide something, uh, a link where the, your, your audience can go to the thing that you're actually promoting, especially in this case, your music. 
um, always include that in the ad text above you, whatever it's an image or video. I always stress you try to use video because video is the gets the best results, gets the, the highest retention rate, especially if it's you addressing the camera and you're using subtitles and it's quick, it's concise and it's entertaining. Um, those are the best kinds of ads. So your music, spend money to promote your music in general. Uh, point to your SoundCloud, point to your iTunes, point to your Spotify, get those people over there. Use your money to do that. Um, that's a good investment. So uh, you, spending money on music, that's, that's another point I wanted to talk about. Um, another area in, to use Facebook ads where it makes sense is music videos. Any kind of video that you have where this may go along with your new single, you actually would probably want to release a video along with your new song because you'll get better results if you do have a video there. But if you don't have a video yet and you promote your song first and then the video comes out, promote the video. Get people to watch that video. Track how many people are watching that video. Target the people who follow you. Target people who you might think will like this kind of music. Um, it's definitely spending money on video if it's good video. And we're not talking grainy in the bathroom, uh, talking in the mirror. Don't promote that video, but promote video that promotes your, that has something to do with your music and it is good quality, um, good sound, obviously. It's got you in it. It's everything that you are. A good video is worth spending your money on, especially if you're targeting the right people and you have a budget for it. All good things. You should definitely spend money on your new video. Um, sponsor those ads, get that video seen, get that video heard by as many people as you can. Um, let's talk about another one. Uh, how about you got new merchandise? Now this is a good one because now you're not just promoting something where you're just putting out into the world. This is possibly a return on investment. If you have people out there who follow you, who love your music, who have bought something from you in the past, um, run ads to these people and you might be, you might be getting a return on investment here. You might be getting a, you put on a new shirt design. Okay. Well, check it out. Everybody, we got a new shirt design. Um, you probably be best running ads to people who already know who you are uh, in this case because you're asking for money. And uh, you, I don't think any stranger who doesn't even know who you are is going to give you money. Matter of fact, they'll probably be insulted that they're seeing an ad from you. So target, if you're going to do that, target people who already know who you are or if, if they have bought merchandise from you in the past. Um, merch is a great place to spend your Facebook advertising money to people who already know you. Um, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's a business model. And if you're truly an artist and you want to get your career going, you're going to, you know, it's smart to get that side of it going as well, where you're actually advertising things that people can buy so that you can actually maybe start making money as well as giving out and offering your fans great products of you and your music via t-shirts, via iPhone cases. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but you get my drift. You see what I'm saying about, about uh, offering merch. Sponsored ads to people who know who you are about new merchandise, um, places where they can go to your online shop, online store. That is another good use of your money to invest in if you're going to use Facebook, Facebook advertising. So, um, now I just wanted to really touch on, I, I wanted to go through all those points on where you should be spending your money. Now I want to talk about, you hear me talk about a lot of targeting, a lot of audiences. Um, there, are difference, there are differences in audiences, as you already know. There are people who have no idea who you are, which we call cold audiences. Um, and then we have people who may know who you are. They visit your Facebook page. They engage every now and then. Um, they, you know, every now and then they'll swing by, they'll comment. Those are called warm audiences. These are people who know who you are and they show some interest. Those are great to have as well. And then you have the hot audiences are people who basically super fans is what you call them is they're there every time you say something and put something out, they support you. They may have bought, uh, may have bought uh, merchandise from you. They're always there. They're very reliable and you, and you appreciate them, number one. Um, and you say, thank you, number two. Uh, these are super fans. So that would be a hot audience. So when you run these ads, when you decide to say run your video ad, you want to make sure that you may have to split your ads up into reaching different audiences. So for example, you're not going to run an audience to the cold audience or people who don't know who you are and, and address it as if they know who you are. That is a turnoff. You can't say, hey guys, check out this new single. I know you're gonna love it. Boom, uh, and someone goes, who is this person? I don't know. 
like everybody's Facebook feed is personal. Everything they see in there is personal and they expect whatever's coming up that they're going to relate to it. And if they see something that they have no idea who you are, you're talking to them like you're, you're supposed to know who they are or they're supposed to know who you are. Guess what? It's a turn off. They're going to swipe past you unless you have some crazy viral video that catches their attention for five seconds. Okay. That would be running ads to a cold audience. You want to introduce yourself. You want to say something like, Hey, if my name is so-and-so, if you like this kind of music, then you check, check this out. Check, check me out. Um, find some way to relate, have them relate to you. Uh, if you're a fan of this band, check this video out, check my video out, you know, please. Thank you. Say all these things like you're introducing yourself. You want to run ads to these people as if you're introducing yourself, be nice, be friendly and be brief. Okay. Those are really good ideas when it comes to running ads to a cold audience. Now to a warm audience, you have a little more leeway as to what you want to write, what your ad copy is going to say. These people know who you are. You can be a little more loose, a little more friendly and be like, Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, check, you know, new album coming out. I really appreciate all your support so far. Check this video out. Boom. Okay. Something like that. Something that addresses the people that already know who you are. You're targeting the people that have engaged on your Facebook page, whether, or they're on your newsletter list. You can be a little more informal with these people, um, a little more relaxed. So again, you can be running the same ad or the same piece of content with it's your music video, but you're going to have to address these two different audiences differently. You don't want to turn off cold audiences and you want to keep your warm audiences excited because they're excited about you. So that's a big difference. And then of course the people who are your hot audiences, you could probably group them in with your warm audience when you run these ads. So you don't have to run a separate ad to them. They're probably a smaller group anyway. And if you address it, address them like you would be addressing your warm audience, I think that's going to be good enough. But it really is the difference is when you're running an ad to your cold audience and you're running an ad to people who actually know who you are, which is your warm audience. That's a big difference. So again, depending on what it is you're going to spend your money on, whether it is a coming upcoming show, whether it's going to be um, your tour, whether it's going to be a new music release, whether it's going to be a video, whether it's going to be merch, keep in mind of who you're advertising to and how you're addressing them. So that may split off how you do your ads as well. And again, you're going to have to budget and finance for these ad for these ads. So if you're going to do that, make sure you're spending them in the right place for the right content and to the right target. Um, that is the key to getting in the right spot. Now, the last thing I want to say before we wrap this up is it takes time. It's going to take time to get into that groove of finding your audience. Every musician and every artist thinks that they know who their audience is. God bless them. If you do great, but most of us don't, most of us don't know who to target. So it, remember it takes time and that means it's going to take money to find that sweet spot of an audience of your demographic of people that will respond the most to your ads. Don't get discouraged if you run an ad and you target a group of people and you think that that's the winner and nothing happens. You get crickets. Don't get discouraged by that. Try again. Try something else. Do research into the people who are listening to you or research into the people who are engaging on your Facebook page. What are their similarities? What age are they? What interests are they? What do what else did they do? Um, it's a little, you know, do some research into that, find out. And the more you dial it in, the more you target it down, and it's going to take a little bit of time, the better off that you're going to have when you finally get that sweet spot dialed in with your targeting, your Facebook ads, then you know you can spend more money on this ads. You can spend more money on that group because you have it dialed in. When you're starting off, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest spending a whole lot of money, especially if you're still trying to fill out who your audience is. So. Uh, that is some uh, last advice I wanted to hand out. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't get discouraged. Keep plugging at it. Keep plugging away. Start small with small amounts of money. And as you dial in your audience, you can spend more money because you're finding out who they are and what they're responding to. So, okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast today. If you did, thank you very much. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you get a chance or check me out on Spotify and iTunes. I'm out there. You can subscribe there as well as well as check out my songwriters planner at www.songwritersplanner.com. And thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace and love.